Okay, close your eyes and think about this question. Who dresses in all blue, shoots pellet-like projectiles, was built by and takes guidance from a doctor-like scientist, and it's all done in a run-and-gun style action gameplay? No, it's not Mega Man. How silly of you to think that. Boy, were you wrong. Of course, I'm talking about Shockman. What? You've never heard of Shockman before? Okay, I'm not at all surprised, of course, right? But let's pop in this turbo chip and see what it's all about. This is Shockman. Okay, where do I even begin with this one? Shockman is the English title for the second game in the overall Japanese series where it's known as Kaizo Shoujin Shububiman, I think, and it's the only Shockman game to land in the US despite there being three games in the overall series. Let's get the Mega Man references out of the way first. Off the top of my head, it's a side-scrolling running gun where you shoot pellets, and you have a charged up Mega Buster shot, and you play as a robot-human hybrid guided by your builder and doctor, who goes by Doc here, and takes on a main Wily-esque villain who creates an army of robot-like adversaries, and they own a castle at the end of the game. Oh, and I almost forgot, Proto Man and Roll are here too as Jita and Mew, who unsurprisingly start out against Shockman, only to learn that Ryu, the Dr. Wily of this game, is a power hungry villain and cares little about their feelings or their loyalty. This game's Dr. Light fixes the broken robots and, you know, it probably is just easier for me to explain what's not like Mega Man since it's far fewer. The game is rather linear and there's no discrete stages, certainly nothing that you can pick or choose from, and there's no real map or overview either to understand your progress. You'll just keep progressing and occasionally there's story and dialogue to help understand what's really happening as you keep going. I will say the story elements are a great addition, even though it has some pretty hilarious dialogue that can really only be from this time period, like the villain's instant death plan, for example. Later on, it's actually explained. Let's, let's have a look. The Emperor has a terrible plan. Instant death plan, right? Yep. Now get this. They'll fire a death beam at the Earth from Death Satellite. Now, pausing for a second, this seems like pure gold. I mean, assuming it's not missing parts of the sentence, we have this entity now known as Death Satellite, which can fire death beams, and now I guess understandably under the plan called Instant Death Plan. But wait, there's more, as Shockman, of course, asks, where's that? And our most helpful doc says, in the universe. Wow, you really can't make this stuff up. Fantastic. Anyways, back to the game, the stages are good and will use horizontal and vertical scrolling well to keep the platforming and pace fresh and enjoyable. You have a traditional health bar that can be sometimes refilled with random health drops, but it's nothing worth banking on as it's not uncommon to have very long periods of time without seeing a single one, only to get of course multiple back to back. The graphics are fantastic and can't be overstated with great sprites and parallaxing backgrounds with really vibrant colors that just make this game really pop. Accentuating those visuals is the music, which for the most part is really good and sometimes it's absolutely rocking.
Some stages are auto-scrollers, which works well and keeps it unique, but just when you felt it needed something else, you get to jump into your rush jet, or sorry, your shock marine, and get your shoot 'em up on. Later on, Shockman learns that he's an Autobot and transforms into an airplane to keep the shooter levels going too. These stages are fun, especially being on the turbo graphics and having that built-in turbo button on the controller, but to avoid misrepresenting the game, it's very much a side-scrolling platform the majority of the time. The game has various bosses and the difficulty here can be no joke, so thankfully you have unlimited continues to help develop a good strategy for taking them down. The continues are setting up on checkpoints, and it's a bit too sparse for my taste given the difficulty here, and death can mean redoing large sections of the level. The bosses all have an interesting and unique look and feel that make them all genuinely enjoyable, though the harder ones can get frustrating until you figure out the best way to beat them. The final boss, no surprise here, is the Emperor Ryu, and true to his Dr. Wily connection, he rides a very Wily inspired stomper machine. Taking him down and delivering the final blow to the credits roll feels just as satisfying here as it does in Mega Man. So the real question is, is this game any good? Undoubtedly my answer is yes. It's more than good, it's great, even if it rips off a ton of what makes Mega Man, well, Mega Man? Its graphics, music, combat and bosses, stages and mechanics are all well done and seriously enjoyable, and it's a fantastic addition to any TurboGrafx collection for sure. That said, I just so happen to have the next installment in the series as well, so let's check out that one next. Okay, so a year later, Japanese audiences would get a follow-up, which would be technically now the third game in the series, Shockman 3, though again it went by Kaizo Shoujin Subububumen 3, Aiki no Princess, uh, again I think, on the PC Engine CD-ROM. I popped this one in, but since it's all in Japanese, save for the menus that is, thank god, I have no idea what's going on in terms of story. That said, it diverges quite a bit from the last one, and so do its connections to Mega Man as well.
biggest change is that you're not shooting pellets anymore. You're a full-blown swordsman and your main attack is swinging that around, which, to be fair, is how the original and first game in the series had Shockman attacking too. You can still charge up your attack, which shoots out this mega bullet, but it has some strange quirks. If you re-tap the attack button after shooting out that projectile, you can then somewhat control its trajectory. This is clunky and it oftentimes, especially until you get used to it, has you just end up unintentionally interrupting your movement since it does force Shockman to stop moving while manipulating the orb. Later on, this mechanic can be super helpful though, and it's especially important for bosses, so it's worth noting to not really ignore it completely either. The jump and movement physics also got a revamp, and sadly not for the better. It's workable, but disappointing to see that it's a regression for this type of game. Another unwelcome change is that there's a lot less of the shooter-based levels. In fact, there's only one, and the backgrounds for it are seriously boring. Moreover, the overall difficulty of this game, relative to the last one that is, is super easy. On my first playthrough, I beat the entire game in less than 30 minutes, long cutscenes included, and I bet I died less than 10 times total. Certainly a divergence there. Bosses, too, seem to have gotten incredibly easy with relatively few hit points to speak of. Most can be killed without any strategy except for mashing your slash button. Even the final boss, which is indeed the hardest simply because there's just no room to maneuver, forces you to just slash faster than you get hit for a very uninspiring end. I mentioned the cutscenes, and here is likely one of the only real positive changes. Taking advantage of the CD technology, you will get some great animated cutscenes complete with voice acting. And if only I knew what they were saying, I could comment on the quality. After defeating the final boss, you're on a beach, seemingly giving me the impression that it was all a dream, but then some of the bosses come back and it ends with this great 80s style freeze frame conclusion that confirms I really have no idea what's going on here story wise. Technology. Overall, I can't recommend this one, and I'm not super bummed it never got localized to the US, but it's not terrible either, I suppose. I mean, certainly worse things are out there. Okay, and there we have it! Well, are you ready to turn in all your old Mega Man games for the incredible Shockman series? Eh, probably not, right? But it is pretty cool to see something that, well, at least feels inspired, if not blatantly ripped off, by our beloved Blue Bomber. While the follow-up certainly didn't knock my socks off, if you have a TurboGrafx-16, it's most definitely worth your time and attention. That said, I also believe it was released and made its way through the Wii U Virtual Console, so that may be an option for some folks as well. Either way, I'm curious, what's your take on this other pellet-shooting robot hero? Let me know down in the comments below. And as always, thank you for watching Retro Ranger. <laughs> I'm not going to